Welcome to section 48 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Coxiella burnetti, which you can see right here. This scene will take place inside of a barn. As you can see, this queen with long brown hair owns the barn, and she's here to make sure all of the important tasks get done for the day. She's a burnet, which sounds like burnetti, so just think of this burnet queen for Coxiella burnetti. If you look outside of the barn near the entrance, you can see that we've made the sunset pink, which is to help you remember that Coxiella is gram-negative. This is a gram stain of Coxiella burnetti. Notice that the organism appears red, so it's gram-negative, but the shape is a little unclear depending on where you're looking at. So, for example, this spot looks quite a bit different from this spot over here. This is because Coxiella is a pleomorphic organism, meaning it has the ability to alter its shape and size. Okay, let's return to the image. All right, I've been referring to our main character as a queen, which is hopefully pretty obvious by now because she's clearly wearing a crown on her head. The crown is here to remind you that she is a queen, and the letter Q in queen should make you think of Q fever. Q fever is simply the wide spectrum of clinical manifestations of a Coxiella burnetti infection, and we'll talk about these features as we continue discussing the image. So, queen's crown for Coxiella burnetti causes Q fever. The queen was originally treated very poorly by her stepsisters when she was adopted, but later she married the prince and is now the ruler over the land. Now as payback, she makes her mean evil stepsisters work in this barn for her. As you can see, one of them is delivering a baby calf. You can even see part of the cow's placenta too. The placenta contains amniotic fluid, so we've included it here to help you remember that Coxiella burnetti is transmitted through the aerosols of cattle amniotic fluid. We've also shown another mean stepsister cutting sheep wool. Look at all that sheep wool flying around in the air. This is to help you remember that Coxiella burnetti is transmitted through aerosols of sheep amniotic fluid. Because the burnet is a queen, she has servants that constantly bring her food and help her with anything she needs. You can see the servant guy offering her a plate of escargot snails. We've used snails before to represent spores, so we've included this to the image to help you remember that a sporulation-like process protects the organism from harsh environmental conditions. Now you can see that we've added another sheep to the image that is inside of a cage. The cage represents a cell, and the fact that the sheep is locked up inside of the cage and unable to leave should help you think of obligate intracellular. Also notice that this scene is taking place inside of a barn which could also be thought of as a symbol for the cell. So Coxiella burnetti is an obligate intracellular organism. Because this is a barn, we've added all sorts of animals, including horses. The horses are completely black, without blemish, which is to help you remember that a rash is rarely seen in patients with Q fever. All right, let's turn our attention back to the mean stepsister delivering the baby calf. As you can see, she's pretty grossed out by this experience, and the smell is too much for her to handle, so she begins coughing. The cough is here to help you remember that patients with Q fever may present with pneumonia. Just like in many of our other images, the cow in this image has a liver spot, which is here to help you remember that patients with Q fever may present with hepatitis and transaminitis. If you look at the other evil stepsister, you can see that she's sweating profusely. I guess this shouldn't be too surprising considering that she's not used to this kind of manual labor. In any case, the sweat is here to help you remember that patients with Q fever may present with flu-like symptoms. Now we've added another servant to the image. He was bringing some escargot to the queen when he accidentally tripped causing the plate to shatter on the ground. The plate is our symbol for platelets, so the fact that it's getting broken should help you remember that patients with Q fever may present with thrombocytopenia. He's not the only one dropping something on the ground. The guy in the buggy cart has dropped a petri dish on the ground too. He was here doing some research under orders from the queen in an attempt to breed the best animals in all of the kingdom. Unfortunately, he got distracted by the lively calf delivery right in front of him, so he accidentally dropped the petri dish on the ground. Anyway, the cart is our symbol for endocarditis, and the petri dish that's getting broken should help you remember that the organism is unable to be cultured. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that patients with Q fever may present with culture-negative endocarditis. Finally, notice that we've shown a dirt bike on the ground next to the evil stepsister. She used to be transported around the village in a very nice buggy, but now that her stepsister has become queen, she's forced to come to the barn every day on this dirt bike. Just like in our other images, the dirt bike is here to help you remember that the treatment for Coxiella burnetti is doxycycline. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 27-year-old male presents to the emergency department due to a subjective fever, myalgias, and shortness of breath for the past several days. He's also noticed strange bumps on the pads of his fingers that are quite tender. When asked about recent changes in his life, he states that approximately one month ago, he was hired to work on a dairy farm. Physical examination reveals a cardiac murmur and tender raised lesions on his finger pads. Blood cultures are obtained, but no organisms are grown. Which of the following additional findings would most likely be observed in this patient? 
A, an AST of 19, B, a platelet count of 73,000, C, a hemoglobin of 10.4, or D, a chest radiograph with bilateral hilar adenopathy. Okay, let's go through the highlights. The patient has had a subjective fever, myalgias, and shortness of breath. He recently began working on a dairy farm. Physical examination has revealed a cardiac murmur and tender raised lesions on his finger pads. These are called Osler nodes and are highly suggestive of bacterial endocarditis. Finally, blood cultures didn't reveal any organisms. Collectively, these clues should make you think of culture-negative endocarditis. Also, the part of the question stem about the dairy farm is suggestive of recent exposure to cattle, which should make Coxiella burnetti the most likely diagnosis. So with this in mind, the correct answer is B, a platelet count of 73,000. This is an image of Osler's nodes on the left hand of a patient with bacterial endocarditis. As you can see, they're raised discolored lesions that tend to be tender to palpation, and these are highly suggestive of bacterial endocarditis. From the image, recall that the guy dropping the petri dish in the buggy cart right here is here to help you remember that patients with Q fever may present with culture-negative endocarditis. Also, the guy dropping the plate right here is here to help you remember that patients with Q fever may present with a low platelet count or thrombocytopenia. A is incorrect because Q fever also causes hepatitis, so a normal AST would be less likely than an elevated AST. So A is incorrect. C is incorrect because anemia is an extremely rare finding in Q fever. So rare, in fact, that we didn't even include it in the image because it's not worth your time associating anemia with this condition. Thrombocytopenia is much more common and much more likely to be seen. So C is incorrect. Finally, D is incorrect because while Q fever can cause pneumonia, this description is suggestive of sarcoidosis, not pneumonia. So D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is B, a platelet count of 73,000. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Coxiella burnetti.